What's up guys and welcome back to the Battle Central Europe Season 3. We are in the third and final game between the Coalition of Cool Killers, CCK, and Denial Esports. Game 1 went to CCK, Radiant took Raxes in about 30 and then ended the game shortly after. Game number 2, well, Denial did the exact same thing and it was also on the dire. And because this is going to be the same setup as game number 1, it will be the exact same thing. CCK are going to take Raxes 30 minutes in and then win the game shortly after. Uh, I honestly have no idea what's going to happen, but who knows? It's going to be CCK mixing up their bands this time, letting the Beastmaster, or getting the Beastmaster some rest. Io still in the pool. They're going to take out the Puck. Brew, now Viper, going to be the bands from Denial Esports. And in the past couple of games, it has just been one team just sitting back for a little bit too long with their draft and just not quite getting enough done while the core farms up. Uh, last game, Denial with the Luna, the Nature Prophet, had a very aggressive lineup. This time with the Venomancer, it's still possible they do go for that, but it is not really Denial's style to do that with the Venomancer. Remaining. They like to have the Venomancer start off as support, Five as uh, I believe fucking mad, and then he goes into a lane after the hero Reserve leaves. So time. heroes like Slark for Denial should be the goal. Jakiro would have also been pretty Dyna good, but CCK are going to grab that one up. So an aggressive pushing hero on either side with the Veno and Jakiro, or... Uh, yeah, Veno and Jakiro on each respective side. And maybe they're going to be getting some tower destructions. Who knows? Ten it seems like that should be the goal for either side. But for right now, the drafts are actually pretty similar. Yeah, Five they have lots remaining. of dot damage. They have a stun. And Denial, they're actually, like, on average, about the Reserve same in far as far as tankiness is concerned. So that's kind of cool. I'm sure they planned it like that. Still, Io is in the pool, and that's a hero that Denial Esports do love to run. I don't know if it's going to be fitting into their draft. It would have to be a Venomancer mid, Ogre, Io, or a Io dual lane mid. That could work, too. Ogre, Venomancer, and then Centaur or something like that. That would actually be pretty good for them. They do like to run the Io quite a bit. That's why teams have started to ban out Io's against the Denial side. And Denial, they're also going to get... Well, they're going to get Broodmother banned out from them. As I said in the first game, Fucking Mad is not a fan of this Broodmother. He has been banning out the Broodmother first, or you know, in the first banning phase, for the past couple of games that I've seen. And in this Radiant set, it was also the ban for the first two. So there was definitely that. Fucking Mad hates the hero, but it seems like CCK also hate the hero. So a gentleman's agreement not to spend bans or not to pick up the Broodmother. Though unfortunately. Because it's not actually a gentleman's agreement, they will be forced to ban it out. Else the other team breached the contract, and then you don't want to be doing that. That's just that's just mean, guys. Gyrocopter going to take the boot out now. Faceless Void is also out. Scarf Mage still in the pool, so I guess that could have been a pretty nice combo for CCK. Or the Witch Doctor would have been good as well. Denial are going to go for a Doom, and that's kind of curious. Oh, but CCK. Oh, Chikiro Ventral Spirit, both ranged. Visage also ranged, and you know what that means. We might be in for a Drow Ranger. And Denial, they don't really have that many great heroes dealing with the Drow Ranger just yet. Maybe a little bit down the line when the Blink Dagger's up on the Doom and Venno, they'll be able to get a little bit done. But until that happens, it's going to be rather underwhelming for the Denial esports side. The question right now is, do we pick up a Drow Ranger ourselves? Ten seconds remaining. Usually the answer is going to be no, but oh, we go for an Undying instead. That's Dying good. Team I, I like it. It's not the best hero versus a Drow Ranger, but... I mean, you know it's coming. You might as well just be super Radiant aggressive with it. Ban. The lane most likely going to be Undying, Venomancer, Ogre, Magi. Going to try to run into a Draw Ranger, Visage, Venge lane. And that lane is for CCK Dying is actually team really ban. good. But Nile Undying is the king of tri-lanes. Right up there with Visage. This might be a lane, a game where we get to see who is actually the king of tri-lanes. Because Visage arms his soul assumption that much faster. When there's three heroes doing damage. And Undying gets a lot more decay value, so... Who knows what's going to be the case Five there. At remaining. least for the Denial side, their goal is going to be match up Undying against as many heroes Radiant as possible. And that should be setting up towards the top lane. TA now going to be banned out as well as Razor. The Razor ban pretty straightforward from Denial. Though for CCK, they could still go for someone like a Mirana and be just fine. TA would have actually... Actually would have been pretty terrible on their side. Never mind. Would have been a bad one. Uh, Wind Ranger now the pick up for Denial. They don't have any heroes that can really get close to the Drow Ranger. But they do have heroes that kill her off. Dooming her is pretty damning. The Wind Ranger, but now with the Shackle Shot power, and Shackles can land on Familiars. 
or can stun off of familiars. However, it will not stun the familiar itself. It's kind of weird how that works. I, if I recall correctly, it's been a while since I've seen Wind Ranger Visage together in a game. But the Invoker is the last for CZK. They don't really have any huge tanky frontliner. But they have so much damage that it might not even be relevant. And with the Invoker pickup last game, it was played as a Wex Invoker. Did okay for the CCK side. This game, I don't know if it's going to be the same thing. Certainly if it does end up being the same thing, it'll be a lot better. Because he will be attacking very quickly with a lot of extra damage. And if you go for the same build, Orchid... You could put some serious work on what the Denial side have, so I actually wouldn't mind seeing the Invoker going for the same exact build this game. And it looks like it is going to be the same exact build this game. Okay. Prepare for so if last game was any indication, guys, Kex Invoker is going to be going for Wex, and then he will have a lot of extra damage to Ranger. So he's going to be playing the Invoker in that lane. Vilik is going to be playing the Jakiro, currently down towards the bottom lane solo. LeBron is going to be on the Visage. Suki is going to be on the Vengeful Spirit. And that leaves Tibbs on the Tib, rather, on the Drow Ranger, all going up towards top. On the top lane, for Denial, Fucking Mad is going to be on the Undying. Paris is on the Venomancer. Cryo J is going to be playing the Ogre Magi with Joral on the mid lane, Wind Ranger. That leaves Funzi on the bottom lane as Doom. Uh, on the bottom lane, Vilik versus Doom should be a very, very heavily favored matchup for Vilik. Liquid Fire versus any melee hero means free harassment that is perfectly free. And uh, perfectly free as far as mana is concerned. You are able to get right clicks in without drawing aggro, good times in general. And Doom is inherently a weaker laner. He is tanky for sure, so he'll be able to withstand some of that. But there's no way that he's going to able to decently recover from that as he's going to try to chase down. This, this is what you saw right there. That's pretty much going to be the name of the game. It's just liquid fire, then run away. <laughs> liquid fire, then run away. Easy peasy. Over towards mid, the Invoker versus Wind Ranger matchup should be a little bit, sl uh, very slightly favored in the Wind Ranger. However, because there is the aura from the Drow Ranger to consider, I think Invoker suddenly does have a be much better time. CCK, they just really want to kill off this ward right now. Are you going to deny it? Oh, they are going to deny it. 50 gold. Ward put out of his misery. It's really a shame that you can't just pick wards back up, since it looks like you can. Just grab it and yank it up, put it in your stash. But that's not going to be the case. It's on the top lane where we're going to be seeing the most action, almost guaranteed. It's possible for mid lane to get a kill. Maybe Jakiro's going to get a kill on the Doom. But for the most part, we're going to see how well can Denial zone out Tib. Paris has a Gale level 1, and fucking mad, as the Undying will be able to put some serious damage into the Drow Ranger, while at the same time not taking too much himself. And we have Cryo already messing with Suki. The pull is going to be blocked, it seems. At least that's the objective here for Cryo. I don't think he could exactly make that happen. Drew off one range creep. But the aggression on either side is going to ramp up once level 2, maybe level 3 is hit. Level 1 Gale is certainly very devastating from Paris. If he lands onto Tib, it could time. be the death of the Drow Ranger. A very fast death as well. Over towards mid, Invoker is starting to take a couple hits from the uh, Wind Ranger. But once he gets level 3, once he gets a little bit more quas, the Wind Ranger's damage output isn't actually that high. So he'll, for the most part, be fine in that lane. Maybe he'll be surprised by a Shackle Shot, but uh, that's probably Radiant's unlikely as well. Tower. The look down towards bottom is going to go aggressive versus Funzi. There's a quite a bit of regen on this Doom, and if Villa gets into a man fight with Doom, then he's probably not going to be winning that. Needs Liquid Fire to chip Doom down. He's in fact losing the damage race right now. Funzi is going to chase Villa down. Another dual breath is going to be thrown. The dots are huge, but the Tango is still taking Doom and keeping him alive right now. Jakiro going to try to turn around and kill off Funzi, but it will result in just damage being traded. There is no salve on the Jakiro, though. It's going to be up towards top lane where they start their aggression. Paris can take quite a bit. Fucking mad, though. Just the threat of the Undying is going to keep Paris safe. And I know for sure that I'm going to miss First Blood. There's so many ways that First Blood can happen. Like bottom lane, it's just a slow burn on either side. Mid lane, a random shackle shot into a power shot can get it. Or up on top, a Gale. So, don't get your hopes up, guys. Definitely do not get your hopes up. Top lane is in a very de delicate situation right now. Tib, not having the best lane in the world, but also he's not doing too terribly either. Vengeful Spirit found a haste rune. Now is moving over towards the mid lane where there is a courier. 
though the courier is going to take the safe path back observer ward from the radiant spotting that rotation in tib is going to take a fire blast up towards top now a gale as well as tombstone tib is going to be the first blood in this game they might actually get lebron as well fucking mad taking a soul assumption to the face but lebron is definitely not tanky enough to withstand all of that cryo is going to collect a double plus first blood suddenly ogre is really really wealthy and that is pretty much what you got to do against jar ranger kill her off don't let her farm pressure her pressure the crap out of her and then try to get your blink daggers up and hope for the best of course Late game, Jar Ranger with Visage is pretty broken, plus Invoker is really balanced as well. But for right now, Denial are doing a pretty good job at keeping this job down. They're not completely shutting her down, but I don't really know if there's a way to completely do that in this type of laning stage. This is, I think, probably as aggressive as you could, prob as you could be without being suicidal to your lanes. So Denial are going to be pretty happy with that. However, the situation down towards bottom, not the best. Doom is still getting a couple of last hits here and there. The Liquid Fire from uh, Harass from Villic is going to get worse from here on in. As it will just lower its cooldown. You'll be chased down by the Doom. Doom once again going to try to pick a fight with the Jakiro. Liquid Fire plus the Dual Breath is a lot of damage. However, Doom with the Scorched Earth is going to redeem most of that back. So going aggressive versus Villic is just trying to pull as much regen as he can out of the Jakiro. And Jakiro is not that healthy either. If Doom hits a random level 6, and oh man, I missed the top fight up towards top. Well, there's still a Tombstone down on the floor. LeBron is going to be swarmed with zombies, and he's going to be brought down. Suki now going to take a Fire Blast. Another rip, and it looks like Suki can try to hide up towards top, but he will be soul ripped down. And that's going to be another 3 kills for Denial up towards the top lane. Now 5-0. And Paris, he has gone for 2 points in those wards. He's going to be pushing out that tower as much as he can. This top lane for Denial is working out splendidly for them. And the other lanes aren't working out too terribly either. Doral is actually leading the way in CS in its entirety. Even with the additional damage from Invoker, he's struggling to get the last hits. Like, he has plus 8. That's another blade of attack right there in your inventory. And yet, Doral with 60, 71 damage, he's still doing a lot better than the Invoker, which is pretty insane. Of course, Jar Ranger in a full-on tri lane normally isn't the situation, as she is protected by a couple heroes most of the time, but not completely 100% of the time hugged by those two heroes. So she usually gets dual lane amounts of experience in the tri lane. So usually at this point, her aura is a lot more devastating, or she has some items. And it looks like CCK, they're going to try to rotate around to ensure that Jar Ranger gets those items. But this is now spotted out by the Denial side. They see the Jar Ranger, they will soon to see the Vengeful Spirit. And that means that the Undying is going to have to take a trip to the bottom lane. Don't let up on this pressure unless they want to let up on this pressure. They will go back up to the top lane and try to take that tower. That's also a worthwhile way to go. You can shut down the Drow Ranger later, I suppose. Take a tower now, get some map control, and be happy with that. The Doombringer is going to be not the happiest about the situation. Now up against two ranged heroes as opposed to just one. But still, it should be fine for him. He's been sneaking CS here and there, and with Devour, you're pretty much always guaranteed your farm on Doom, no matter what the laning stage might look like. Is under attack. But up Dyer's towards top, this tower is going to fall, fortified. and it looks like Funzi is not going to be falling anytime soon. CCK starting to fall really far behind, and it's not even 10 minutes into the game yet. Already down a tower 6 minutes Dyer's in, top tower and down 5 kills as well. And the scary thing is that Denial, they could just keep rolling with this. This is what Undying does best. He goes aggressive, he does not stop. And it looks like he won't stop either. They still have heroes at the top lane. Double damage to Kiro, pretty darn threatening. But Tombstone, a little bit more so. Especially when you have an Ogre Magi at level 4 right behind you. So CCK, they're going to have to inevitably get pushed by this on top. And now there's a point booster for Paris. He's going to straight up rush an Aghanim Scepter. Ags on Venomancer is pretty disgusting and they're gonna go for a dive now on Villa. Tombstone is down. LeBron cannot do anything to help out the Jakiro. Liquid Fire is gonna go in onto Cryo. They're gonna cancel one TP over towards the top lane. The double damage rune doing quite a bit of work. Fucking mad now. Gonna get Soul Assumption down. Villic is gonna be the trade though. Cryo still dueling with LeBron. Looking for one more Fire Blast. He will be able to get it out but he's going to give his life for it. In the end zombies will take that kill. Now Suki is gonna try to kill off the Tombstone but he is swarmed with zombies already. Paris with the poison damage is gonna get a favorable trade up towards top. Denial trade two for three. Might make it a little bit worse, however, because there's an Invoker coming in. Paris does have quite a bit of poison damage to put out. Keck should be able to take this, and they do have the Wind Ranger also coming in. Paris is going to get most of his damage drained out, but he's going to man fight Keck. Now Shackle onto the Invoker is going to give Paris a triple kill. Here comes Braun one more time. He knows that Jarrell is right around the corner. Jarrell doesn't have that much mana, but they also have the Undying and also the Ogre Magi incoming. 
It's going to be a bloodbath up on this top lane. Fucking mad. Going to wrap around once again. Seven seconds until his tombstone is up. And I'm sure he's going to want to dive that one more time because they went with it once before. Why not go for it again? With Jiral opening a Shackle Shock onto Billick will allow the zombies to stack up on him. Jahiro's going to take quite a bit of damage. Soul Assumption onto Jiral. going to drop him pretty darn low. But the Wind Ranger will be just fine. Now Billick going to get ignited. Still the zombies are on his tail and he will be brought down. LeBron is also going to take quite a bit of damage with the Fire Blast. They might be able to get this kill. No, don't want to chase any further. Soul Assumption does too much damage. But now 10 for 2, the advantage in favor of Denial, plus Tower is going to be dropping very, very shortly. In the meantime, Funzi, he's not getting the worst situation down towards bottom. Jar Ranger doesn't want any part of that fight up towards top lane, but soon enough, they're not going to have a top lane. Denial, they're extremely roughed up. They are very damaged, bumped, bruised whatsoever, uh, but still they're fine enough to take that fight. Invoker may be looking to catch one as they retreat. Paris is probably the most likely, but Keck is not going to engage. Now the entirety of that top lane is now in favor of Denial. The gold advantage and experience advantage just 8 minutes into the game should be huge. And wow is it. The gold a little bit more so than the experience. But already a 7500 gold advantage for Denial. That's a disgusting advantage for 15 minutes into the game. We're not even at 10 yet. So they're going to be rolling down to the bottom lane. It looks like with pretty much everyone. And they're going to be looking for a push. How awesome would it be for Denial if they had... Ajikiro right now. It would be pretty much game winning, but instead they have Tranquils on Paris. They have an Ogre Club on him as well. He's bulking up real big. And Jarral's also getting some pretty nice farm as well. 1700 on the Wind Ranger. Doom is at 1200 gold as well. Maybe a Blink Dagger down the line. Don't really know why Paris is going back up to the top lane. Seems like he could get a lot more done down towards bottom. Does he really want to go for a Drow Ranger kill by himself? Because he's going to run into more than he bargained for. There's a smoke up from CCK and they're going to run straight into that Venomancer. The Undying is going to join up with the Venomancer. They still want to go for this top lane. That's actually really weird. I thought they would have all gone down towards the bottom lane and just taken a tower. But instead they're going to end up in a 3v2 situation. Fucking mad. Has Tranquils though so he's really darn fast. They're going to see the Familiars come in. Paris can take a little bit of damage from them. Should not get hit with the Stomps. One Stomp going to miss. Second Stomp going to hit. They already have a Gale and Tombstone down. LeBron going to get things turned around. Here comes the Jakiro as well. Tombstone is going to be destroyed immediately. Fucking mad. Pretty darn taking that one. A nice two-man shackle shot as Jarral does arrive. Suki and Villick both looking to fall. And there goes one. Fucking mad still alive as they throw the Ignite the way of Tib. Jarral right on top of that Jar Ranger is going to kill her off in a hurry. LeBron also taking a stun up. Soul Assumption before he dies, but he will go down. That's another three free kills for Denial. At CCK, they pushed out just a little bit too far. They had the numbers advantage for a little while, but a two-man shackle shot, and suddenly that 4v2 turns into, or 4v3 turns into a 2v3 in Denial's favor. Now, is going to roll right back to the mid lane, where Funzi's in a little bit of trouble right now. Has a Wind Ranger to back him up. Double damage at that. One shot as a warning shot. Keeps the Invoker back. Funzi has not done anything this game, by the way. Like, this Doombringer is the late-game insurance for Denial. Uh, this is why I usually don't like Doombringer. Like, I've seen him in so many games now, so I know exactly what he could do. But I just don't like him. Of course, his Doom is going to be very nice, but if Denial had another pusher or something like that, this game could be very quickly over. Yeah, instead, they're just pulling more and more ahead in the experience in the gold. Look at that net worth chart. Look at that. That is just disgusting. Now they're going to roll over Dyer's towards the mid lane. Is there is the almost the item scepter completed on Venomancer. He's 5-0-7. Has been involved in literally every single kill. No, wait. No. Not literally. One he missed. Dyer's I don't know which one that was. Maybe one that happened on top lane where he was too far away. Something like that. But anyway. It's still going to be a tower pushed over towards mid. Paris is going to lay a whole swarm of those wards up. And they also have Undying who's ready to dive in from behind. And Undying from behind is not where you want to have your Undying. If you are a CCK, of course. Power Shot and LeBron already roughed up really badly. He has to fall back or else he's just going to die. The Plague Wards are going to be, for the most part, cleaned up. But Denial, they're still looking for this push. And the Creep Wave is coming in. LeBron, still very weak. Suki now, pretty weak as well. Cryo's going to lead the charge. Gets double stomped and going to get Tornado EMP'd. That's going to burn most of his mana. Has a soul ring though. Paris does not have that much mana regen, but he will be able to take it anyway. And the tower gets denied him towards bottom lane as well. Villick now gonna get doomed. I think he should be fine. He has backup coming in the form of the invoker. And Bunzi just doesn't have enough damage. This is the weakness of Doom right now. Man, I hate this hero. Like I really just don't like it. It's annoying for sure, but he's just sometimes so underwhelming. Sometimes he just doesn't do anything. 
Oh, yeah. That's just me, though, guys. That is just me. I know what he could do. I know he's situationally very powerful. But sometimes he's just really bad. And, well, speaking of, Joral is going to pick a fight with Tib. Ready to use a shackle. Damage with the Maelstrom charges will be enough. One too many lightning procs for that Jar Ranger, and that's going to be her fourth death of the game. Just wants the Asha, that's all she wants, but Wind Ranger, proving that she's the better archer. Going to take that hero out. The Jar Ranger has level 8, so everyone on CCK doing a little bit of extra damage, but it just doesn't seem like it, because Denial, they're always on the aggressive. They don't have that much mana regen for the Venomancer. Maybe Arcane Boots? No, they have no Arcane Boots. Maybe they don't need Arcane Boots? They're not going to need it, it seems. They're going to make a tier gain of a tier 1 tower. Fucking Matt also going to lay a tombstone down to defend the mid tier 1. Fire Blast and the Billick. Multicast as well. Hero down. EMP Tornado is going to land onto Cryo and Fucking Mad. Both, they lose their mana, but it's going to be LeBron in the most trouble as Doral is right on top of him. Shackle Shot going to latch. Power Shot through as well. Right click, right click, right click. One Lightning Strike for good measure. That's going to be 16 for 2 now in favor of Denial. Funzi going to run in Suki. Takes a little bit more damage than he bargained for, but he will be backing off just fine. In fact, turning around, realizes that, hey, this is only Eventual Spirit. Suddenly a Drow Ranger, so he's not going to get the kill. But the rest of his team is right behind him. Venomancer has an Agonims. Pre-15 minute Agonims. That is just dirty. If you get hit with the ultimate right now, you're not completely dead because this isn't lethal. But just take a look at that damage. This is pretty much a level 2 Poison Nova now. And it is going to hurt quite a bit. So essentially, Parrish just gained two levels with this item. And then when in two levels, he would have gained five levels. That seems pretty good to me. Seems like a good good item. And 16 for two. What can CCK to actually come back from this? They still have outrageous damage. That's pretty much the only thing that's going well for them. The Jar Ranger is getting decent farm. The Invoker has an EMP. These are all nice skills in order to bring yourself back into the game. In order to do that, though, you have to stem the bleeding. And Denial, they're just constantly making puncture wounds all over CCK. The tower advantage is huge. They're going to even take a couple familiars to boot. They have three heroes over in the mid lane. This is where CCK have to take their fights, where they have numbers advantage. Yes, they're going to be walking into a Venomancer ultimate. Fucking Mad, though, is not in the area to help out. He's going for a Crimson Guard for the team. It would be very nice to have that in their next push. But CCK, they are going to make a play here. They're going to smoke up as three. They're going to circle around. No, they're going to go for Roshan. Hmm. It's certainly not going to be the most expected thing for Denial, although this is a very standard move to do when you're a Jar Ranger. You just have the Medallion on Visage, you get sometimes that wave of terror from the Venge, and it's going to be a very easy, very safe double life for the Jar Ranger. So Denial did not see that one coming. They're going to be a little bit surprised by that, but do they care? They're certainly far enough ahead that they are in a situation where they can afford not to care. Funzy, though, going to run into way too many familiars. He's going to be going down. Outrageous damage, as promised. And Doom, I'm going to say it, is a bad hero. Yeah, that's right. I said it. I'm sure I'm going to make some people mad by saying that, but I don't give a shit. Uh, he's going to be just completely eaten up. And, well, I mean, it is Drow Ranger also being a good hero. The aura from the Drow was pop, so the Visage familiars were hitting with a plus 40 damage boost pretty darn good and cck i mean they get the roshan they have still the aegis on drow denial they're gonna pause for a minute and look for a crimson on fucking mad although he's been up here for a little bit of time and oh okay i was like he still doesn't have it he literally did not get any gold since last i checked no he actually did and he's now flying that item out immediately cryo though is going to be the one really looking for blood he does not have to worry about sentries on the cck side or he does but he already checked the inventory so he knows what's going on keck uh oh keck he's gonna hit with fire blasting knight plus a blink and shackle it will be uh swapped out by the ventral spirit but i don't think the invoker is going to live he will burn in fact by the ignite giving ogre an instant double kill the ignite also taking down the ventral spirit mana situation for denial not the best funzy kind of low but he already used his ultimate so he doesn't really care about that it's a free two kills for the denial side and then this is going to be a tower down. Bottom lane, CCK going to try to push out with Jakiro, doing quite a bit of damage because Liquid Fire and the Aura. Jaral is going to pick a fight here, and this is a kill that Jaral can certainly take if he lands a Shackle. If he does land a Shackle, then actually, no, Jakiro doesn't have any mana, but he's waiting for a blink. No, he's not going to go for it at all. Jaral's going to play it safe. One too many creeps around. Radiance top tower is under he will attack. still see the fact that Vilik is here. And here comes Ogre Magi, though. Vilik is going to leave right now. 
18 for 3 right now, and Denial just running this game. Tib, all he wants is farm. Please, mercy. There will be no mercy. He dodges the gust, Funzy. Now gets the Doom onto Tib. But unfortunately, Doom is a bad hero, and, uh, well, he can't really catch up to Drought Ranger afterwards. Will he get the kill anyway? Probably not, because here comes CCK. Funzy's going to instantly blink out after getting Grave Chilled, and he will be fine. But Doom down, and Tib is still going to survive. Man, at this point, I'm kind of saying it jokingly, except it's not really. I'm going to say, like, I'm half-joking the entire time. So you're not exactly sure if I'm being serious about this. But 18 to 3, and now Denial, they have all the Tier 2 Towers bar 1. And that Tier 2 Tower is actually looking pretty tasty for them. Unfortunately, it should not be possible for Denial to push this with only two heroes. If CCK come in with any heroes at all, then they will be able to clean those Venomans the, the Venomancer and the Ogre up. Fucking Mad should also not be doing this. He probably should be joining the team. Uh, Undying is a powerhouse in the first 20 minutes, but then after that, he slowly starts to fall off. And then come late game, he's just disruptive as a tank, which is fine, but certainly not what you want. Vilik is going to set up on the Jakiro. He does not get the Ice Path out. Now the ultimate from the Veno. If they land a single Gale or Poison Sting onto Vilik, he will just die in the future. Tib is now guaranteed lethal, or at least he will pop the Aegis. Vilik is going to turn around and kill off the Ogre Magi, but one Poison Sting and he's dead. Easy ultimate, easy life. It's a two for one technically so far. However, here comes fucking Mad. I don't really know what the plan is. What is the plan? Alright guys, here's the plan. Leroy Jenkins. And now he's dead. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, now he's dead. Alright guys, there's two heroes there. I see him. We're going in. Wait a minute. Where is my team? <laughs> oh man, that's like not even the first time that Denial have made a mistake like that. Just going in with no reasoning, with no backup. You're gonna get punished. You're gonna get punished for sure. But someone else might get punished is Suki. That is a very long shackle. Jarrell's gonna get silenced. He has to back up from this damage of Tib. Here comes the Gale, though. Paris and Jarrell can kill off Tib right now. No more disables. Here comes the Doom. But he's a bad hero. He's gonna try to go for Tib. He's not gonna throw the Doom just yet. We'll level death and we'll kill off Tib in the end. Jarrell is gonna bottle up in the meantime. They know where Kek is. But they will not know where Kek is anymore because he's gonna TP out of there. They kill off the Drow in the meantime. That's her fifth death. Poor, poor Drow Ranger. The Venomancer are going to survive for a little bit longer. Do they have an urn on the team? It looks like they actually have no form of sustain on the team at all. No mech or anything like that. But who needs mech or anything like that when you can go get more kills? More kills, more kills, more kills. Jakiro down, guys. Jakiro down and CCK are pretty much on their deathbed. They have to worry about this bottom lane. The creep wave isn't exactly pushing that fast. Paris doesn't want to attack because he needs his Tranquil Boot regen. But now he has an ultimate that is going to be with a Blink Dagger. Plus level 11, so it's a level 3 ultimate right now. Damage, 81. Actually, yeah, it is a level 3 ultimate. And that does, like, something like 900 damage over time or something like that. I don't know the exact numbers. I don't recall. But level 3 Aghanims is, like, a 1,000 something. It's, like, 1,300 or something like that. I don't know. Math is too hard. I'm not going to do it right now because it's not what I'm going to do. But um, the point is, it hurts like hell. Especially if you're CCK, you don't have any real form of sustain in team. They actually are pretty tanky. Like, there's an Orchid on the Invoker, which isn't tankiness, but it's a good item. There's Visage packing two points of his Aghanim Scepter. Jar Ranger is Sanjin Yasha. Jakiro is Jakiro. So there's, like, not the most vulnerable to this, but still, this is this is an Aghanim Scepter Venomancer we're talking about. It does a crap ton. Especially if he has allies, and this time he will have allies. This tower is forfeit. Dyer's There's nothing that, that uh, CCK can do about this except for try to split push and make a trade. It looks like mid lane is going to be the attempt. Fucking Mad is going to teleport right into Liquid Fire. That's never a good way to be. But he will now try to pick, pick a fight with Vilik. He has to worry about Suki coming in as well. Suddenly Suki is going to be the one in trouble because Vilik is going to peace out of there. Run Suki, run. Oh, here comes Funzi. With the beat down, they're going to level death him. Chase down the VS. Punch him. Punch him. There it is. Got him. They take the tower, they lose one tower in exchange up towards top. Really, there's nothing that they could have done to escape from that solution, from that situation. But it's still going to be favoring Denial in a pretty huge way. I don't really want to press this button, but I think I have to, because this is pretty much the game right now. This is it, and then this is also it. Not the most experienced favorite Denial, but still they have now complete map control. No towers are up for CCK on the outer ends of their base. And the question is, what is Denial going to wait for? in order to push in for the high ground. Maybe this four staff on Undying? Ogre Magi, Agonim Scepter is way too far away. No. 
Sheep Stick? Probably not. Aghanim Scepter Doom? Now up. So they have some pretty nice items right now. Nothing huge that they are very close to that they're going to wait for. Or they should be waiting for. So it's just going to be denial, I assume, to just look for a couple more pickoffs. And the pickoffs have been so easy for them, then you might as well just keep on with it. Man, Crow J, two deaths on the Ogre Magi. What a feeder. Two deaths on fucking Mad also. These guys had really step up their game. Paling in comparison to Gerald's and Paris's goose egg of deaths. 506, 6010. Oh yeah, that's the life of a core. That's the good life. But at the same time, it's a support life. And that's what you do. You die for the team. That's your job. That was in the job description. They probably should have read that. They're going to wait for Roshan, and it's going to be up in an unknown amount of time. Why is it that whenever I look at the Roshan pit, it's always just about going to show me the time, but not quite? There we go. 40 seconds. 38 seconds, actually. Slightly shorter than the last time. Very slightly shorter than the last time, which I said was going to be one of the shortest that you'll ever see. This is go also going to be one of the shortest that you'll ever see. Lucky Mad is going to get caught with an Ice Path, but it's only level 1 skill. It's going to be doing next to nothing. In fact, it will do next actually nothing in the end. All regenerated back, and now they're going to chase forward. Jorah looking for a shackle. Suki is going to get latched to a tree, and there's no way that Bench can escape. Gets punched in the face. That's not a way to die, getting punched in the face. Ultimate onto the Draw Ranger. She's going to straight TP on out of there. But this is how ridiculous the poison damage is. It's like she can't even regenerate in base. Though it's definitely not worth it for Denial to do something like that. They're going to group up as four Radiant in the mid lane. Fuck, uh, Funzy Radiant going to go up towards top for some reason. Just uses his Animitis, then back off, back towards mid. Where Denial are going to look to end the game. There's a Focus Fire on the Wind Ranger. Blinks out from the Tornado. No, Cryo. EMP and Ogre is suddenly so sad right now. And also the Creep Wave is being slightly cut by the Familiars, but they're not tanky enough to do this. Power shot through, shoot them, shoot them, there's one, there's two. Wind Ranger gonna collect big on those familiars, and that's a little bit more gold in Denial's pockets. Like they even needed it. Like Mad sticking behind a little bit too far, but it doesn't matter because Vilik is actually not able to kill him off right now. The Doombringer also with the Blink Doom. If anyone from CCK steps out, they're just going to die. Uh, Denial should be waiting for a Venomancer ultimate right now. Without that ultimate, it's kind of pointless, and they're actually gonna get Paris caught in the net. Here comes the rest of CCK as well. This Venomancer is so screwed. However, he has funds right behind him. Swap back onto Paris. He's going to take quite a bit of damage. Shackle's not going to latch, but the Doom does. Drop on the high ground. Actually continuously firing, but they set up for a Macropire Ice Path combo onto Funzi. And he will be brought down in an instant. That's two down already for CCK. Now the Tombstone Frank Mad, but he's going to get stunned up. He's going to pick off Suki in the end. Now the Blink down from Jarrell. Shackle once again going to miss, but LeBron still taking way too much damage. Is going to get bailed out by the Gust of the Jar Ranger. And Funky Mad now is going to try to run away, and he will be successful in doing so. Really sloppy initiation from Denial, although the, to be fair, it was pretty much them getting initiated upon. They're still going to try to go for this one, but it should not be the best decision that they've ever made. They're going to fall back eventually. They're going to put some damage in where they can, but making a 2 for 3 like that, not good. Of course, the Venomancer was dead to begin with, so Denial running one, at, one after another after the fact, definitely not the cleanest way to uh, follow up in that fight. Regardless, they're still holding on to a huge kill advantage in this game. They see an Ancient Stack, they know that Roshan, or they should know that Roshan is up soon enough. I don't know if they've actually checked it, but Venomancer is here and they should check it fast. They're going to clear the Ancients though, because Roshan is still going to be there, but the Ancients may not be. Last time CCK snuck the, the Roshan very, very quickly. This time they just don't have the map control to do it. If they get caught out in the pit, they will just get cleaned up, because they're so far behind. And if Jar Ranger loses her Marksmanship bonus, then it's pretty much just all over for CCK. Right now, Denial, they could just walk right into the Roshan pit and kill it. They're going to take a whole bunch of gold from the Ancients first. Being a, uh, building a Sheep Stick on Jarrell and a Yule Scepter on Venomancer. And Sheep Stick, freshly bought from the store, is going to Hex Villic, but not going to do that much. Now Ultimate is going to land only onto one. It looks going to turn out for an Ice Path combo to Paris. That will not be lethal. It's going to be Suki to take the Doom, and he will be going down. Paris, burning, burning, fine. He also has Tranquil, so he'll be able to regenerate a little bit afterwards. With two down... For the CCK side, they are going to get their mid lane pushed. Paris has, has Tranquil Boots up, but he's get, still not that healthy. Up oh, until Soul Rip. Soul Rip is pretty good. The Aghanim Scepter, freshly purchased by LeBron, might also be relevant, but he doesn't actually have his Aghanim Scepter yet because his familiars are not resummoned. I think Aghanim Scepter on Visage should resummon a familiar. Should summon an additional familiar. 
That should happen. Funzi gonna die forward, looking for Tib. Gale is going to land. Funzi will lose most of his mana here. Also, a good amount of his health. Bucky Matt also caught in the base, has a force staff, but he doesn't even have enough mana to use it. Ice path is ice wall is gonna be dropped. LeBron gonna hit hit with the ignite. Draw looking for a shackle angle, but this is not really where you want to be fighting as the Wind Ranger. The only chance for a shackle is a two man. And Paris though, he's getting way too far ahead of himself. He's gonna get brought down. Paris making another soft move. Villick gonna try to set up onto Jarrell. That's not gonna happen, but a swap back onto the Wind Ranger. She's gonna run the other direction and blink out right in time. And she will be just fine to teleport back unless there's an ice path. Nah, it's too late. So Denial, they try to go for the high ground. They don't succeed in doing so because of sloppy play, which has kind of been the name of the game from Denial in these past couple of games. They've been making way too many mistakes to be considered, uh, to be having these fights considered clean or these game wins considered clean wins. Very, very close there. Now they're going to be going for Roshan CZK. They forced Denial back and this will be the death of Roshan. Another double life. That It's going to be Chikiro's trade. He's going to go down. Sheep Stick's still available. Ogre's going to force that right into LeBron. The Tombstone's going to be dropped in instant, but a nice shackle onto LeBron and Tib. They're both going to be falling right now. Tib going to try to get it out. He does have his Aegis, so he might actually live, but the odds of that are very unlikely. Funzi going to try to chase down for Suki. The Doom will be lethal on the bench. Now Funzi going to try to man fight up against Kek, but with the Familiars coming in, it will be his death. Tib is going to respawn in between four heroes, beaten down, and he will be taking a fall now. Triple kill for Joral. They still see Kek, but... I don't think they're going to waste their time chasing after an invoker with maxed out Wex. They're going to go for the mid lane instead, Denial. And with a buyback on the Drow Ranger, they probably should not lose Raxus here, CCK. They have, or they will have, enough heroes in the area at the right time. Wind Ranger also is going bottom lane for some reason. This is what I'm talking about. Like, Denial are just not, not on the same page in this game. Like the other heroes over towards mid, they're going to get EMP, Macro Pirate, Ice Path, fucking Mad and Cryo both taking a lot of damage. Crimson Guard is going to go up, but it's not going to do enough. LeBron now is going to hit with the ultimate, but he's going to be just fine. Miss the bolt onto the Cryo is going to kill him off in the end. Man, Denial, they're just not playing well at all. Like, this is so uncharacteristic of Denial right now. They're just making so many errors. Like, going splitting up when they shouldn't be splitting up. Going for high ground pushes in poor positions with not much mana to escape. It's the, these, these small things are giving CCK the ability to fight back. And it's kind of upsetting to see just because, man, you're in the Battle of Central Europe. You're, you're, you got pretty far. You did pretty well so far. But yeah, now you might just lose this game because you are making one too many mistakes after you had like a... You still have a 3 to 1 kill score advantage. They're still in the lead. But they're not really playing like they're in the lead. Cracking high ground is always the hardest part of any sort of game like this. But getting that done is going to be a very difficult task for sure. They're going to try to jump forward. Gale onto LeBron. And swap out is going to put Suki in trouble. The Doom is going to go onto the Venge again. I don't really know why you do that. I guess it's better to Doom someone than no one. But Vengeful Spirit is not the high priority target. That's Invoker. You want to doom the Invoker every single time. Radiant's or the Jakiro. That's good too. Uh, I think Radiant's Doom shuts off Marksmanship Aura, so maybe you want to shut down the Draw Ranger. You don't doom the Venge, that's what I'm getting to. Yeah, Denial, they're just going to go for it anyway. Radiant's Gus is going to fly through, connect onto forward. two heroes. Looking for a Shackle Shot. Jarral constantly scouting out for those angles, I'm sure, but Tombstone's going to fall. Or Tombstone's going to drop, rather. And then zone out everyone else. There's four staff in. Tib gonna take a 3x multicast. He's gonna pop the BKB. Now turn things around. We're fucking mad in. Cryo once again caught in the ice path macro pyre combo. They're both going to fall. Denial. They're just taking these weird ass engagements. I don't understand why they're doing this. It's like, hey, we're just gonna go right in and we're going to win instantly. It's like, well, your initiation is pretty much nil. Four staff and a fire blast is okay. But not when you fire blast the Draw Ranger, then don't go for the Draw Ranger. You have to fire blast her, stun her, and then kill her. Seems pretty easy. But that just hasn't been happening. And now CK, they take yet another good trade. They're going to eventually get back into this game because of the new patches, comeback mechanics. Especially if they get this kill on Funzy. Keck can open up with the Orchid. Cold Snap as well. EMP not going to do too much damage. She needs a Tornado to really finish him off. Force Staff forward. Max Movement Speed Invoker. Funzy trying to limp away. Joral there with the Hex and Shackle both. Here comes some Familiars though. And suddenly the Wind Ranger has to book it. Will turn around, get one more hit onto Keck. They need one more hit on him with Poison Sting to get this kill, but they will not get it. Paris now going to get chopped down. 
Our Denial actually going to be losing this game right now because it seems like it's a possibility. Jorel is going to jump forward with a nice shack shot onto LeBron, just holding out just a little bit, and it will kill off Suki as well. Fucking Madden Crow going to chase forward for Tib. This time, the Jar Ranger does not have a BKB to pop. However, Ice Path is going to bail her out once again. Jorel looking for another initiation. Shackle once again will miss. Pause two minutes. Are you kidding me? Tib is going to be brought down first, I'm sure. Now, Jakiro blinking up to the high ground. And he will be spotted out, but he will be able to escape. And familiars will also be dropped. Well, you know what? It was nice of Suki to say something. It's uh, good that he actually waited for the pause. But seriously, denial. Get your shit together, guys. Seriously, guys, get your shit together. Game of Thrones, exactly. Like, this has been CCK holding high ground pretty valiantly. I suppose it is due in part by the fact that Denial have heroes that excel with fighting outside of bases. Just because Wind Ranger doesn't do very well when she's breaching high ground. Venomancer is more of a slow pusher and you can't really build up a nest of Plague Wards that could hit the tower when the creep waves are just being annihilated. Undying is also getting a lot weaker since the game is progressing, so Denial, they still have a commanding lead in this game, but they have to take Raxes. If they don't take Raxes, then they're just going to die, because CCK have been landing up their ult their spells really well, and Voker's been landing a couple of EMP tornadoes. The Macropire Ice Paths have caught the uh, Ogre and Undying pretty much every single time, and every single time they haven't brought down, and CCK... Their Drown Ranger is still working with quite a bit of net worth, so she's giving a lot of damage to her allies. And that extra damage from Denial is being mitigated somewhat by the Crimson Guard, but it's not really being mitigated enough. Tib has you know, a pretty decent build. It's very defensive for Drown Ranger. I'm sure she's going to be looking for an agility item, a big agility item moving forward. But for right now, she's pretty much where she wants to be. LeBron also has his Hagadims. He's where he wants to be. This game, even though Denial are still pretty fine it just doesn't seem like it's gonna be enough at least it's, it's gonna be a lot more difficult than it really should be we get ourselves unpaused these familiars are all gonna die there's one there's two there's three visage not even alive for a resummon doesn't even have it on cooldown so with no familiars maybe denial have an opening now they have no venomancer though another ultimate's gonna be up in 70 seconds and Jarral's gonna be hunting that is not Jarral. Jarral's gonna be hunting for someone will not find the invoker too damn fast all right, time to go for mid lane again. If it didn't work the first two times, it's got to work the third time, right? It has to. Literally indisputable logic. Lucky Mad's going to drop the tombstone, charge forward. Funzi going to get the doom onto Villic. This is probably going to be a much better fight. Chikiro is going to die right now. That is a lethal doom unless he gets, somehow gets back to the fountain. No, he will be denied. No, he will be killed because of the force staff. Oh, man, they could have denied him. Not like it's going to matter too much. EMP, Tornado is going to connect onto nobody. Now they're going to lose the melee Raxes. Jarrell is also going to start focusing on the range Raxes. That's going to be mid entirely lost by CCK. This time because Funzi got a Doom onto someone that's not Ventral Spirit. And look at that. Jakiro is actually going to be going down. And it's going to let Denial actually do something. They pop the Crimson. And the Familiars are flying in. Funzi does not have his ultimate awkwardly stuck here. The Venomancer is not with his ultimate just yet. Four seconds until he has that. But they're going to put some poison damage in to start things off. Funzi will blink away from that situation. Paris is going to be taking focus. He's getting a silence. He does get Yule Scepter. That means he could use his ultimate straight after. And he will land it onto everyone. Suki's going to drop first. Everyone, though, is going to take this dot. LeBron and Tib are going to be standing on the front lines. They will be fine enough with the damage that they have. Fire Blast onto LeBron will bring him very low. But a power shot will kill him off. Tib and Keck are still taking damage from this Nova. But they will survive. And that is going to be an even fight, I suppose, in this game. Uh, the Venomancer, Yule Scepter, saving his ass right there. Uh, Denial, fighting without Doom, a little bit risky. Again, they are very far ahead, so they can afford to be making a couple of mistakes here and there. But mistakes like staying too long as Joral, that's not something that they could do. He will be able to stick the landing back at base. And finally, Denial have taken the mid-set of Raxes. It was very close, however. It only really happened because Jakiro went down first. If they didn't doom Jakiro, if they didn't actually kill off the Jakiro, then that would have been easily, or er, defendable by CCK. Maybe not easily defendable. They would have had a fighting chance. Fucking Mad is going to run to an invisible invoker while he himself is invisible. The awkwardness is real. 
Jarrell and fucking Mad gonna join up with one another. This is not something that they should be doing without more backup. They still don't have the Doom up just yet. No, there he is. And Venomance Ultimate up another 40. Looks like it's gonna be bottom lane that Denial are gonna set their sights on. It's worry about top lane pushing in. Familiar is gonna be a constant nuisance as far as that is concerned. Doom does not have any way of getting to that bottom lane very quickly. He might actually be jumped soon enough. Funzi's gonna put himself in a little bit of risky position in order to split push this top lane. But here comes the rest of CCK. Keck closing in fast with the Ghost Walk. Familiar is also in position. Funzi is dead. There is actually... Wait, did he miss the Orchid? He didn't... He missed the Orchid, but Funzi's still dead, so... Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, got kill. Guess you don't need an Orchid. But in the meantime, it's going to be the base where Tib is taking quite a bit of damage. Will survive for a little while longer. Ice Path, not going to be thrown just yet. Villa gets interrupted by a Fire Blast. The Wind Ranger, again, throw him into the air. But now the BKB is popped. Suki is going to be the target of focus first. Has a swap, but can't use it. Tombstone also taking some focus, but fucking Mad is going to be now fist fighting LeBron as he reach summons those familiars. Paris and Jarrell just focusing on the tower, whereas Cryo and fucking Mad focusing on heroes. The Tombstone is going to be cleaned up. And CCK is still fighting in a 4v5 situation. Jakiro needs to heal up first. They have set up a couple of play guards here and there, but Tib is going to make short work of them. Cryo may be looking for another four staff initiation on Tib. That will be very difficult because there's a BKB on Tib. You'll see it coming. You'll be able to pop it. And Paris also does not have his ultimate. Heck is going to throw a tornado wide. There's an ice path and Mac Fire set up onto Cryo J. He's going to get snapped up and he's going to be brought down. Shackle onto two is very nice from Jarrell, but it's just not enough. They lose the Ogre Magi in a desperate attempt to do something. Honestly, I don't even know what that something is. Now they're going to be forced to, once again, fall back. This is, like, the slowest, most painful follow-up to a devastating start that I've ever seen. CCK, they're not giving up. They're fighting back, and they're fighting back very, very well. With plus 68 damage on all of their heroes, plus occasionally on those familiars. This damage is certainly proving a little bit difficult for Denial to deal with. And because everyone has so much damage, they're all able to clean up these... Uh, these super, these super creeps over in the mid lane. And now Roshan is back up. This is a cheese Roshan and CCK have gotten two already. Might as well go for three. They might lose Villic in the meantime. Shackled to a tree. Also has a sheep stick, Jarrell. If he really needs it, we'll use it just for good measure. Villic is going to go down. Jarrell easily taking that kill there. But it's probably going to be worth it for CCK because now they have Roshan under the belt. Plus cheese on Kek. Here comes Paris for some reason. Funzi is here as well. Paris, he's unable to get his ultimate off. I don't know why he blinked in. Tib is going to get doomed. But he's just going to turn around and kill off the Wind Ranger, at least try to with the help of the Invoker. Funz is going to get swapped back, and the two supports are going to kill off the Doom in the end. Tib's still alive, though I think he's going to die right now. He has his Aegis, so it's fine. Very luckily, Paris gets to escape that situation. Blink in, no ultimate? Like, what the hell's the plan there? Not a good idea. Denial, they're really... They're, do they really want to go for more? They have a gem, so they're just going to try to take some map control right now. I don't know if just going up the high ground is the best idea anymore. I mean, every single time they go, they get a little bit more chip damage on the tower, but they also lose heroes with no trades in sight. So it's not even working out that well for them. They're also not that healthy. They have a Venomancer ultimate now, but it has to land on a couple. And so far, the Paris ultimates have been not that great. They've been landing on like two guys with such a large AoE and a blink dagger. You should be landing it on five or, you know, more than two. It is a little bit more difficult since everyone is ranged in this game for CCK, so their positioning is going to be inherently a lot better. But Paris, he's going to get jumped right now. And he has a chance of escaping? Maybe? Oh, uh, now he doesn't have a chance of escaping. Rip Paris. So, so dead. He's sheeped up as well. That's what happens when you mess around all by yourself on the bottom lane. That's just what happens. You get picked off. 20 to 40 now. CCK slowly bringing this game back. They're still down Raxes, but this is the name of the game, guys. This is the name of the game. Maybe they're going to lose Tib up towards top lane. Draw with the Focus Fire. Agonim's up. They're going to Doom LeBron. And I think this Visage might be going down right now. Tib going to start kiting Funzi. They're going to turn things around and kill off Funzi, or at least put a lot of damage into him. They will still keep Tib alive in the meantime. EMP is going to launch Cryo J now, pretty much out of mana. Tombstone's still alive. Visage now forced to buy back. And Denial, they are just going to take that one kill and then be forced to back off, which is fine for them. That's perfectly fine. It's perfectly reasonable. No sense putting yourself in any unnecessary risk. Unfortunately for them, Tib does get to live. And this game, if you looked at it 10 minutes in, you wouldn't expect it to be at 40 minutes by now. But here we are. 
and we are just going to continue on. I'm pretty sure there's another game that I'm supposed to be casting here. What time is that supposed to be? I want to make sure that I don't miss it, but I'm going to be hosting at 20. We have 40 minutes. We're good. We have so much time, guys. We have so much freaking time right now. But hopefully um, the game isn't going to last for another 40 minutes because I don't like 80-minute games. Those get to me. They're going to smoke up, and they're going to run into Keck. Blink forward for a Hex. They have a gem on someone. It was on the Undying. They will pick off the Invoker. No buyback. Maybe that's the pick off the Denial really needed. And they will not have a Sheep Stick for a little while longer, and Wind Ranger actually not too healthy. But I think they have enough to go for something else. Probably not in the mid lane. They're going to slide up towards top, it looks like. With Wind Run into Focus Fire, this tower is going to be going down. Silence is there, but Tib gets stunned for his troubles. Tombstone down, instantly destroyed, though. Shiva's guard is going to be thrown out. Funzi dropping very low already. He's going to get force staffed out, but he's going to die right now. Swap back, in fact. He's going to be dying. Suki is going to be the trade. The Venomator launches his ultimate. Once again, landing onto pretty much no one. Now Paris stunned up by familiars. He's going to get gusted up. Healed up by Soul Rift, but I don't think it's going to be enough to actually secure his escape. At least Cryo is going to be going down in exchange. I, the Heal Scepter on everyone. Ice Path going to connect onto two. CCK are going to clean up one more hero. Maybe Joral as well. He blinks out of there with the BKB. They lose the Tier 3, but they keep everything else intact. They only lose the Invoker, really. This game is actually slowly starting to get really dangerous for Denial. This is the power of Jar Ranger. She's almost at her Butterfly now. She can, in fact, buy it if she wants to. And... Denial, they are struggling, really, really struggling in order to finish this game. I don't even know if they're in an advantage anymore, honestly. Like, Wind Ranger's really stacked. She's on top of the net worth chart. But she's not able to, you know, really show that net worth off. Undying is not really doing too much. Doom is doing jack all. Like, he's jumping in, dooming someone, and then dying. Literally, nothing else is being contributed by this Doom. Because he can't. Venomancer's ultimates haven't been landing. Denial, honestly, like they're not playing well at all, and they have to be playing so much better if they want to defend. Uh, if they want to actually win this game, CCK they're holding strong. They have the butterfly now up in the Drow Ranger, going to give everyone what another 74 damage. What's the difference between butterfly and eagle song? It's only like five, right? It's just going to be 71 or something like that. But either way, Drown Ranger is going to be that much more tanky. And already we can see Denial struggling to kill her off. They doom her. They focus fire on her. Can't kill her. Maybe she gets Satanic later on. Definitely can't kill her. BKB is running dry. So maybe that represents an opening. But who knows. To you. Now they're going to smoke up. Go into the enemy jungle. They see LeBron. Do they really want to the hell was that? They find Villic instead. That's fine too. Swap out as Funzi does jump right in. Dooms Keck. Man, now the Paris can jump in as well. Has no ultimate though. Lands Gale onto three, but Tib is just firing away. Paris is going to force the Yule Scepter and Ghost Scepter himself. Villic is going to be dropping in the process though. They're going to chase forward, trying to go for LeBron. So far, CCK have lost two. They're going to maybe lose three, but Cryo taking a lot of damage will be bailed out by the rest of his team, killing off the familiars. Tib going to gust everyone back. Joral looking for a Blink Shackle or something. We'll just throw onto creeps, will not land. The creep support from Denial, where is it? There's backdoor protection, or there should be. Why is there no backdoor protection? I don't understand. They're going to jump onto Tib one more time. Hex him up with the BKB. Draw is going to focus fire onto the Jar Ranger, and he will be able to bring him down. There is a buyback on Draw, and will immediately expend it. However, Keck now, shackled to a tree, has cheese. He's going to have to spam the button, but he will not be able to eat it. He doesn't have buyback either. There's the jump in from Paris once again, just for Yule Scepter. Jarrell dropping very low. Soul Rip might keep him alive. Another Soul Assumption is there, and it will be thrown. No cancel by LeBron. He will throw it out now, and it will land as Paris, actually. Fucking Mad is stuck in the corner, and he will be the one to go down. There, eventually. There it is. There, oh, there it is. But CCK, they still hold. It cost them a buyback on the Jarrell Ranger. Denial, they don't really lose that much in the push. They're getting a little bit closer every single time, but they're not quite there yet. Paris' ultimate was not really impactful at all, because he didn't have it. Funzi at least got the Doom off in the end, but man, that Shiva's not blink? What the hell is that? Like, that's not something that you actually do. You Shiva's guard and then blink right after, but I'm watching on stream right now. Shiva's? No blink. Yeah. Um, It's usually pretty good initiation, since Shiva's is pretty nice to have. But, um, I don't know what happened there. And it's nothing that should be happening either. There are still items being picked up by Denial. We have a 
Veil of Discord on the Venno. Mjolnir now on the Windranger. So Static Charge now on the field. But CCK, they're going to look to be on the aggressive now. There's already a Veil on the Jakiro. Only he is here, though, the Jakiro. So really, he shouldn't be doing this. Bad idea, for sure. Also, guys, is the stream all right? Because I fixed some settings, maybe, but still not really cooperating with me. Or it, it looks okay on my end. I don't know if it's stuttering because of my camera work being stuttery, but whatever. Let me know if it's fine, guys. What? Denial? They're going to use, I believe, their last smoke. Try to go for Roshan. Unfortunately, not up for another minute, about. They're going to instead go straight into the enemy base. They have all their ultimates up. And maybe if they get the jump on someone, they could pick off someone and kill them off and then doom another there we go blinkin shiva's gonna find absolutely everyone they're going to make short work of tib this time jawa's no buyback they're gonna charge forward for more power shot's gonna fly through pipe will block all that suki though will not get hit with a pipe and he will be brought down now onto villic they go venomancer ultimate once again gonna do jack all but villic is still in the front line he's not supposed to be there he's gonna be dropping lebron slowed down to a crawl he's gonna be falling as well and Voker the only one to survive I think Denial just have about done it. It was the element of surprise that they needed. Now they're going to focus into the base. No, guys. Yeah, there we go. GG is called. CCK are going to lose this game. Denial barely, barely scrape out a win. But that is going to be a win nonetheless. Keck going to go out and blaze of glory. But that is going to be it. CCK put up a really good fight. But Denial just uh, had too much of an advantage early on. That is going to be it for right now for the Battle of Central Europe. We have another game in 30 minutes, guys. It is going to be between Balkan Bears, Corleone, and Album Sheet. Should be a really good one there. I'm Mike Loris. I've been your only caster. Hopefully, I'll be joined by someone for the next game. But for right now, uh, it's going to be just music and chill time and more water time. But thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the cast, and I hope I sincerely hope you did. Be sure to follow me on face on Twitter at Mike Loris. Follow Hefla TV at Twitter and Facebook. It's all Hefla TV there. The vods will be up on YouTube.com/slash Hefla after the broadcast. And I'll see you guys in the next series. GG.